Hey guys, so the last part in the series that we've, we've been dealing with with prioritizing training, we talked about need and how that you need to be brutally honest with yourself in figuring out what you truly need. What is the stuff you need to work versus what you're already good at and versus stuff you like to do. Um, sometimes though, that's a little bit difficult. Right? Even if we're really doing our best and we're truly being honest at it, we kind of have to, oh, well, I don't know. So here's a, here's a little trick that I've used for myself and I've taught this to uh, some people and it's been pretty helpful to them. What we're going to do is we're going to really try to, as best we can, do a little bit of quantification of the need and we're going to rank it. So here's what I want you to do. Take a piece of paper or two separate pieces of paper, however you want to do it. And I want you to rank in order all the components of being an integrated multidisciplinary thinking tactician and rate them in order. However you define it, you know, 10, 15, 20 parts, whatever, and rank them. So to, to uh, simplify what we're talking about, let's say there's 10, there's more, but let's say we're going we're gonna to pick 10, the most, what we think are the most important, and we're going to rank them 1 through 10. Okay. We're going to put, you know, at the top something like pre-fight threat, cont threat containment strategies, uh, situational awareness, de-escalation, uh, deselection, all that kind of stuff. Maybe we'll put that at one, maybe two, whatever. Fitness, one, two, and on down. Then what we're going to do is you're going to do another chart, same thing, rank it the same numbers, but this time how you're going to rank it is what you think you're good at, from what you're really good at, what you're best at of those uh, little items, to what you're worst at, all right? Then, once you've done that, we're gonna compare them. We're gonna take a look and match those up. And that should give us a, a pretty good idea. So for example, let's say that you put fitness at number two on the on the chart of what's important. Cool. I'm, you know, I, would agree somewhere it's, that's probably true, one or two. But then on your chart of what you're good at, you put it at six. Okay, well, there we go. There's a discrepancy that, that shows you, wait a minute, I think it's really important, but I'm not really good at it. Okay, that tells us, that gives us a guideline of what we should be focusing on. The, on the other hand, then we can have, um, let's say on our chart, of what we think is important, we rank um, pistol shooting at number six. And again, for a private citizen, that, that's probably, you know, somewhere in there, I would agree somewhere in that five, six, seven range. So let's say it's at six. But on your chart of what you're good at, you put it at number one. Okay. And, and this is not, um, this is not a criticism of that. This is not a criticism of what you are good at. It is mer merely a, a, a way to match those things up. So, all right, you, your best skill, your best skill on this chart is pistol shooting. Awesome. But you only think it's number six is important. Okay. Well, probably then what that tells us is, is you probably shouldn't be looking to do two or three handgun courses this coming year. You probably, if you're shooting, let's say you're shooting a weekly USPSA match and one or two weekends a month you go out to the range and shoot two, three hundred rounds of pistol ammo. Okay, well maybe you can start to cut that down. Use some of that money, use some of that time to devote to something else. Something on that chart, that hierarchy of needs that you're not good at. Right? For Like we said, we have fitness. Okay, maybe take some of that money, take some of that time, and instead of going to the range, you go to the gym, or you buy some kettlebells, or you buy a barbell, or you buy a uh, heart rate monitor. Whatever it is, whatever you need, we need to shift our allocation of resources. Um, for pistol mode, not, and that's not to say we're going to ignore the pistol, right? You still, once you developed a good skill set, then we want to at least maintain it. But let's go to a minimal maintenance. Let's say if you think once, once a month of shooting live fire, either, either at the range, through drills, or one 
um, USPSA, IDPA match a month. And then maybe five minutes a day dry fire. And that should keep you at least at a good functional minimal level of the pistol work. That's probably enough while we focus on the other things. And then maybe we go two, three months working on stuff. And then we redo the charts. Where am we at now? Oh, okay, I need to do this. And we can start to compare and, and really figure out where we truly need. All right, so hope that's helpful. Hope that makes sense. If not, shoot me a line, put a comment on the YouTube page, and um, I'll get back to you. Otherwise, we'll talk next about the next step in how to prioritize the training. All right, thanks.